Okay, everybody, uh, welcome to the next talk in the Technical Deep Dive track. And this is, as you can see, one of the more popular talks today. Uh, this was actually the top voted talk in the entire Tech Deep Dive track. So uh, undoubtedly, this is a very interesting topic to everyone. So please give it up for uh, Ilya and Eugene about load balancing as a service. Yeah, OK. Uh, OK, so uh, today, m me, I, my name is Ilya, as uh, I was pre presented. And uh, um, I am uh, one of developers who worked on load balancing as a service in Grizzly release. I'm working on Mirantis. And also on near thin, uh, Eugene Nikonov, he also from Mirantis. And he also one of uh, main contributors from our company into this uh, um, part of quantum. OK, before we start, I would like to thank the whole community who worked, all these people who worked on load balancing as a service and who um, just make large efforts to, to make it happen in Grizzly release. OK, so uh, today we'll just briefly uh, recall what was before load balancing in Grizzly. Then we'll take a look at what uh, we've uh, developed in Grizzly, what features, what uh, architecture, uh, how to use this stuff. And uh, then we'll take a look at the future because um, maybe as all you know, uh, there will be more, more and more services in quantum and uh, uh, actually load balancing, it's, uh, it's the first and uh, we just um, uh, make proof of some concepts on this service. Okay, before Grizzly, uh, there were actually just two standalone services that could work like load balancer. So the first was Atlas, and it's um, it was rather um, so it was it's stable and it's uh, uh, with uh, with large history. So it's it's uh, ac actually worked in some real uh, deployments. And uh, the issue with that, because why this is not became part of OpenStack because it's written on Java. The second one was Equilibrium project and uh, that project was written in Python originally and um, uh, so it worked in uh, with Nova network, not with Quantum. And when we started working in Grizzly, we just took uh, Equilibrium project as a base and uh, uh, rewrote much, much, much code and uh, Made, made it as a part of quantum. Okay, so now let's take a look at what what is it actually load balancing as a service. Uh, so first of all, it uh, it has its own REST API, and uh, REST API it um, allows to manipulate all this uh, actually all four um, models that exist in. Uh, load balancing uh, extension. So it's pools, uh, VIPs, health monitors, and, and members. members. Yeah, we'll, right. uh, we'll, so we'll dis I'll describe what they mean a bit later. Okay. So now just like overview. Uh, also it has CLI, and CLI is a part of a quantum, quantum CLI. So that's the common that when, that is run when you type quantum. Um, it, actually works the same as other command line mm, commands. Okay, also it has a nice UI in Horizon and um, uh, this all features that uh, can be made through REST API or through CLI, they, are, uh, they can be made through Horizon. Uh, also, uh, let me first, the last, the last line describe, so, it has uh, support on DevStack out of box. So when you uh, just install a new version of DevStack, it uh, has uh, all, uh, everything set up and to help you just try a load balancing as a service out of box. So it's just a couple of configurations like. Yeah, in actually you need to modify one line in the local RC, uh, what you would usually do if you need some modification to the default configuration, which is just enable quantum LBS and it will install and uh, Horizon and all uh, other companies will be ready to uh, actually 
to actually be start, started and running. Okay, and um, so, the, so this all things are actually some kind of envelope and this is the behind this, under the engine, there is a HA proxy that is running as a host process on your network controller. So uh, um, our implementation that is available in a, in a trunk, in a dev stack, it's actually a reference implementation and it has um, uh, pl the first uh, plugin for, um, for load balancing and this plugin utilizes HA proxy. And HA proxy, it's well, very, very well known um, freeware, open source, uh, software, software, load software load balancer. Okay, from, uh, um, from perspective of load balancing, there are actually the following features. So these features are uh, part of um, the model, part of API, and um, th these features are implemented in uh, our default plugin. So it's, um, so certainly you can load balancing between some services and uh, the services are actually VM, virtual machine. Uh, there can be configurable uh, load balancing methods, so like round robin, that's, that means that uh, all machines will, so one by one, get, get in, get a, in the order. The same amount of uh, yeah. requests. There can be by default static, uh, static, static IP, so it means that all requests coming from the same IP will go uh, yes. to the same destination. Session persistence. Uh, there is also session persistence. It uh, allows to hold the session, and if, um, uh, for example, if in, in, in HTTP all requests are independent, and if the two similar requests come in the same session from the same origin um, or with the same cookie, uh, they will just go to the same backend service. Uh, we have health monitoring, and uh, health monitoring allows to um, allows load balancer to uh, check whether these backend services are alive or not. And by default, we have uh, TCP, which just uh, checks for connection, and HTTP, which uh, sends GET request. And uh, we have connection limit. It uh, it uh, it is built is feature of HA proxy and. Uh, uh, we also introduce it into API. So it allows just to limit bandwidth and limit connections. Okay, from, uh, uh, from architecture point of view, how it looks. Uh, so before Grizzly, Quantum actually was, um, so Quantum is actually a set of APIs and uh, uh, it has uh, one uh, part called core plugin, which uh, implements uh, mm, all networking, all yeah. level two and uh, some plugins level three, some we are separate extensions, but anyway, core plugin, it's a way how you, um, how your network impl implemented. So it's now, now it's called a core API, so core plugin is the implementation of the core API. Yeah, and in Grizzly, uh, we introduced service plugins. So it's for a core API, for a core plugin, it would be, it, it's possible to load only one core plugin per time. But for service plugins, it's possible to load one service plugin per service type. So we introduced a service type called load balancing, and we have our load balancing plugin, um, which implements, implements the API. Right. So in future, when we we'll have some more services and more service types, there will be um, more service plugins. Okay, that is um, architecture and um, how it's implemented in uh, reference implementation of load balancing plugin. So the uh, blue side, it's a quantum. So on top is extension, which actually um, listens to REST requests and validates them. Uh, under layer, it's a plugin or and the DB plugin, which uh, actually does um, uh, processing of data and the uh, persistent layer. Um, on the bottom, we have agent, and agent, it, uh, it's just very similar to agents, to DHCP agent, to L3 agent, and it uh, pulls uh, a plugin uh, yeah. in some intervals and gets the whole, the whole configuration and reconfigures HA proxy process. Yeah, so some maybe, uh, 
I'll give you a bit more details. Um, agent that um, manages the chip proxy process is really similar to what DHCP agent does, but uh, probably some of you know that in Grizzly, uh, they were in introduced a new feature, which is agent scheduling, where you can actually schedule your uh, router and networking request to different hosts. And that's not the case yet for the load balancing agents. So uh, all HTTP proxy processes are still uh, running on the same host. So it's kind of load balancing host. Um, yeah, and one more word we can tell about how it, how it handles um, uh, how it handles network. So we use uh, uh, network namespaces. Yeah, so, it, so that's why it's possible f to have overlapping uh, networks. Yeah, so for each uh, VIP, there is a uh, separate HA proxy process running in its own namespace, which is connected to uh, pool ID, um, which means that um, HA proxy process actually uh, got its own IP address within its tenant network, the L L2 adjacent. Uh, and the, the word should be told about how you access actually the VIP. Uh, currently, yeah, uh, yeah, I will show the model. Okay, the, so the VIP has the IP address of the tenant network. Uh, so you would ask how, how to access it. And currently you need to uh, associate the uh, floating IP to the port that is occupied by this by this HA proxy process. So it's kind of separate step you need to take in order to actually get the load balancing functionality. Yeah, okay, and a uh, uh, bit more details about the model and about wiring that Eugene just mentioned. So we have actually four models in, in our load balancing model. So the first one is VIP, it's, um, it's virtual IP and uh, this is front end part of load balancing. So it, uh, it's, uh, it has IP address, it has port, and it uh, has, it's linked to some subnet. Uh, so the second part is pool. Pool is just a placeholder, but pool allows to specify the location of members. Members, so the pool may be in a different subnet. In our current reference implementation, both subnets are equal. So it's not possible to um, make VIP from different subnet as pool. But in future, this would be certainly be possible, be a case. So the member, it's um, just a presentation of interface for application running on virtual machine. So here is IP address, uh, and the port, port, and pre pretty all. And we have health monitor, so it's, um, they are standalone objects, so they can be created and are shared between several um, several pools. So we associate one pool with many health monitors. So for example, it's possible to configure a health monitor for uh, TCP, which allows to, to make quick check of health of service. And the, the second health monitor will be HTTP, which, um, uh, so if uh, the first check is succeeds, then the second check will actually check that the that application is up and running. Okay, in from point of view how it's uh, how it's wired and how networks work, uh, how, so here is the schema. Actually, our load balancer, uh, since it's run on a host and since we have one load balancer per um, VIP. per per VIP, um, so it almost stand in a tenant network. Uh, and just to, ha to make it accessible from outside, so we need a floating IP. So for example, in that case, so dashed line, it shows how the traffic will go uh, from outside, from provider network to load balancer and then to virtual machine B. So yeah, in the if uh, virtual machine B is selected by load balancer. Uh, it's a floating IP that associated with, uh, uh, with Port of load balancer, you right. is that right? Yes. yes. Yeah, that's, that's right. Correct. Okay, now, workflow. So workflow, it has four steps. Um, 
first is create pool. Uh, we need to start with this step because the pool is placeholder for, for members. So it's uh, the, the root object <coughs> of the object model, load balancing object model. So we start with the pool. So at this moment we can, we need to provide for pool load balancing method. Uh, subnet. Subnet, yeah. Then we create members, so one member per virtual machine or per service. Uh, then we create VIP, and uh, for VIP we have session persistence. Uh, fixed IP address at the moment. So we, we can provide actually fixed IP if you don't need to, uh, if, if you're not planning to um, make a s external traffic to uh, reach the load balancer, it, it could be enough to have just a fixed IP, so uh, it would be balancing b within the network. Yeah, and the optional step to create health monitors and associate them. So from from API point of view, since health monitor it's a separate object and shared between um, between different uh, pools, so we need separate step to create health monitor and then to associate it. Okay, from UI, the same steps in uh, in UI. So we have um, first of all in our menu we have load balancing features, so it's uh, on, on the very bottom. Um, so we have similar forms uh, for pool, for member, uh, for VIP, and for house monitor. So I will not go into details because it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty easy and it's actually can be, can be, can be tried. Can, you can try it in a dev stack, yeah. Uh, okay, so if there are any questions regarding the current model, so it's time to, to ask them. Because l then we proceed with the uh, bus next. Can you can you use the microphone? It's right next to you. I'm, tr I'm trying to understand, in the case the tunneling is used, the overlay network, so when, where does the, the in-cap decap happen? Is on the, the load balancer or on the VM behind, uh, on the hoster behind, in the pool? Say it again, please. <laughs> it, it like, it, so, it, it, like VXLAN, those things, yeah. So it, does this, uh, is this uh, applicable to this? Uh, no, so load, load. I think it's very simple, like in Tableau Dev, the, the external facing entity that actually I want to receive traffic on www.openstack.org with an IP address of my head name, which is pretty much like this. All traffic comes to that. It gets routed to the load balancer instance, so the load balancer instance can go on its own and spread that traffic across multiple pools. Yes, that's so correct. Okay. Okay, uh, so more questions maybe? What about the level of performance of the right now? I think that uh, we have a way to go <laughs> to reach that. Yeah, the question was about performance. About high, high availability deployment, actually. <laughs> so, no, we, we, we don't support high availability right now. Ah. And, uh, I'm not sure that we will in Havana because it's really advanced feature and we uh, actually need to support basic features in Havana first. I have a question. Yeah. You're describing a load balancer and a reverse proxy, correct? This is not a TCP load balancer. You're, you're implementing this always as a reverse proxy? Oh, actually. Well, for H, you, you may use H, HA proxy as for, for load balancing 
uh, not, not only HTTP. HTTP, it can load balance TCP traffic. No. Right. So are you using it as a reverse proxy or as a no. load balancer? Because it's always a reverse proxy. Uh, it's used as a load balancer. So we balance yeah, traffic from the... <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Okay. So let's let's proceed. Yes, it is compatible. Maybe it's just very low. Very low. Uh, it's, yeah, uh, let's, let's do one question at a time. In so the, uh, in the yes. case of uh, what are modes, you, you, you're, you hide the two source client and it shows as uh, current version support and put in like X44. Uh, yeah. I see. Uh, and yes, you're you're right. <laughs> the answer is no. Okay, okay. So I. Okay, let's proceed with um, with the next, and then we'll certainly have some QA section in the end. Okay, so for for the current for the next version, for the next version we have uh, the following features that are just I think mandatory to have. In, uh, in production. So the first is the support for different types of uh, load balancers. It could be hardware load balancers, software load balancers, and this will be done via driver API. Uh, the second is uh, device inventory. It's a place where we can um, just store just information about the appliances. Information actually. about these appliances. And the last one is uh, different modes for insertion of load balancer into network because uh, the way it's done now, it's just just very simple way. Yeah, uh, so okay, a little bit more detail. So, Eugen, from architecture standpoint. Uh, so, th this part actually was uh, discussed quite recently, like at the summit. Um, currently, we have uh, some kind of driver support within a, an agent, but it it provides quite um, simple API, uh, which just gives the driver the whole configuration and the uh, driver can do whatever it wants. And we have a different thing in mind, which uh, where driver API is kind of reflection of tenant API. So we can manipulate every object and the call will, uh, first of all, uh, it will be reflected in the database and then it it will go into the driver and driver will apply uh, the configuration step on the device because some of the hardware appliances have um, APIs similar to what uh, load balancer as a service uh, exposes. That's why we need to uh, more close mapping be between uh, REST API of the LBS and driver API. Uh, it's, not, it's not the case at the moment, but uh, it will be implemented in Havana. Uh, also, there are different ways of how to choose which um, hardware appliance or, or virtual appliance to use as a um, backend implementation of the service. Uh, so, if you if you if you have a several appliances, you need to you need to uh, somehow um, put your um, service requests and your, or your VIPs into different uh, appliances. Uh, in, the, in this case, um, you need to actually use that device inventory, um, probably monitor the load 
of each of the devices of your inventory and choose what, what is less loaded, for instance. Um, some vendors have uh, their um, such kind of management as external components. So we need to uh, proxy the REST call directly to their management component. Um, and that will be a, a different case. So uh, the current proposal is to have the drivers within the plugin uh, and, and the drivers will, uh, will decide what to do with the REST call, whether we need to choose the hardware appliance and uh, redirect the call to the agent, which will then redirect the call to the hardware appliance, or we need just to proxy the initial REST call to the external management component, vendor specific, and that will be it. Um, yes, yeah, so. Yeah, and actually driver API, it will be available, I, I believe, in pretty soon, so. I hope so. Yeah, I ho we hope so, and uh, this will allow vendors to start writing drivers. Uh, also, we have, uh, uh, we'll have separate invent device inventory, so we actually it's, the name may change because it's, we just decided it a couple of days ago how to call it. So this will be this will be a separate plugin and extension, and uh, it will allow to um, to to store management information how to manage different devices, not only load balancer devices, but also devices and uh, virtual devices that will be used in other services like firewall as, as a service, uh, VPN as a service. Uh, <coughs> Okay. So this Maybe. actually may change, but uh, right now it looks uh, very, it looks like this picture. Uh, okay, and a couple words about different modes, yeah, how so to insert. Uh, one of the mostly used uh, insertion modes for load balancer is routed insertion, and the load balancer actually um, works as a router for the uh, tenant network. As far as I know, um, this insertion mode is not yet implemented in quantum, so probably we need to uh, make such support pretty soon because it's one of the uh, most popular popular uh, usage models for load balancer. Um, it, it also is a part of um, so-called service insertion framework, which is under discussion and probably will be under development soon within quantum. Um, so in that case, you'll be giving the VIP uh, actual external address and probably you'll get one less step uh, in your workflow. Yeah, so you will not, need, there will be no need to uh, create, uh, assign floating, I, floating IP well, manually. I, I, probably that will be you know, delegated to the underlying uh, functionality some kind of this. Yeah. And actually, yeah, it will be, um, so the whole module and the whole insertion types will be, I, I, I believe they will be just part of some library that will be also shared between different services. By the way, that, that's the model mostly for the hardware appliances, which we uh, don't support at the moment. Okay, so that's, that's pretty all for, for today. Uh, yeah. We are ready for questions. Two slides back. Yes, that's correct. So um, <laughs> actually, the whole. Yes. Yeah, ah. So the question would be that uh, initially. Uh, our proposal was to uh, make agent to load drivers, different drivers, so the agent will always always receive REST calls, and then it will forward them to the devices via drivers. But that it appeared that some layers like um, hardware appliance choosing could be done by external component. Some vendors uh, insist that uh, they don't need such functionality within quantum because they have their separate component, management component that actually does device inventory and scheduling. 
that's why we need a bit more flexibility. We need to have drivers at plugin side and probably uh, we'll, we'll have a drivers at agent side actually because um, some other vendors uh, stick with the same model where um, they have different devices but no management about device inventory and choosing. So uh, agent will load drivers as well, most probably. Yeah, so driver is just a you know vendor specific piece of code. So ah, okay, okay, okay. So the question was that we have drivers at both sides, at the side of the plugin and the side of the agent. And uh, I'm telling you that yes, th that is the case because uh, driver is nothing more that, that, than a vendor specific piece of code. Uh, there is no issue to use anything on both sides. Um, so you're you're saying about HE proxy model where HE proxy process, well, um, so the question was that um, current implementation could be extend or improved in the same way as DHCP agent scheduling was done in Grizzly. Um, well, I don't know because. Um, The, f the features that are planned are um, proposed mostly by hardware vendors and maybe they are not quite interested in improving the current, you know, HA proxy on host model. But, you know, the, the author of the um, HA proxy on host uh, is Mark McLean. Uh, if, if he wants to improve the current model, uh, of course, it can be done uh, pretty much the same, the same way as as it's done for DHCP and router scheduling. So I, I, don't, I don't have answer for this question, maybe. Yeah, if you, if you want it, you just file blueprint and implement it. <laughs> it's quite easy. <laughs> so the so um, question was how the host is selected. So the host is not selected and you must have just one agent running on the one host which actually, uh, yes, so the load balancer edges runs just on one host and you can't run the agent on two hosts because they, they would do the same thing. They would create the same processes on different hosts which, which will conflict. Yeah, uh, so it's a mandatory to in, have one in Grizzly load balancing, it's mostly like reference implementation, just like, um, I wouldn't say it's proof of concept, but it's uh, uh, just to show that we, that services are possible on quantum, that uh, uh, there is an API and the uh, vendors can start thinking how to, how to implement drivers for this API and uh, just to show uh, communities that there is an interest in this area and uh, that everyone be involved into the development. So yeah, maybe in production, it's not, it's not a case to have just one load balancer running on one host, but uh, it's just the first step. comment, uh, two cent feedback. Uh, naming is very important. If you call the service load balancer provisioning as a service, it will clarify a lot of confusion because what you're doing at the end of the day is providing a provisioning API. And the load balancer itself could be somewhere else. Uh, right, and I think that's where the confusion is coming. The, the, how, you, how do you map the traffic paths and how you get the traffic to the instance that is actually going to do the load balancing? Whereas the API, the way, what I've heard so far is you create a web, do this, do that, add pools, it's provisioning is how I understood. I could be wrong, but that's my question yeah. and maybe a comment. I know, but that, that's just, as he keeps clarifying, that's a reference implementation. You don't have to spin up things on the same host that could be storing right. the metadata. And that, that's, that's my question. You're, you're right about the name, but uh, as, far, as far as we see, it's kind of... 
Okay. No one interested in the answer. Still here. <laughs> ah, <yeah. laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you know, Ah. So I have a comment about the name. First of all, I see that other services um, employ the same name pattern as well, and I also I think that maybe we need to think about the last three letters of the name rather than uh, about <laughs> introducing the... <laughs> okay, next question. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, quick clarification. Uh, um, I'm sorry, I might have missed it. I, I came in a little late. Um, when you're talking about LBA down there and the agent, are, could that be any load balancing product like from like F5 or Citrix or is that a, a server there? No, oh, it's uh, actual pro yes, product. Okay, so uh, just to clarify again, uh, you're talking about being able to provision the load balancing as a service through any vendor, and you're just your current implementation is HA proxy. Yes, yeah, so it's a, so it's a slide about the next architecture, and if we take a look at the how it's implemented now, where is it? Yeah, so it's a agent specific agent for HA proxy. Okay, so actually we just move uh, this part with agent and HA proxy and agent. From this, from the current implementation, we move under uh, under here, so it will go under driver for HA proxy. Okay. Thank so you. yeah, for example, if some vendor will uh, will provide um, some other function, some other way to communicate with its load balancer, then it doesn't need agent. So for example, if they have existing uh, asynchronous API, then they just can call from the driver load balancer directly and this will work. So no agent will be required. Okay, I think. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Uh, after your load balancer is created, can you add or remove member from that pool? Yes. Oh. We can we can uh, we can do it right now and uh, Driver API allows you to do in the future. Yeah. Are there any uh, elastic scaling uh, capabilities built in yet? Uh, uh, not yet. It, that's on Probably the uh, elasticity is the another layer on top of what we will have that's or what. Yeah, I agree. So it will be most probably task for the heat to to monitor the load and to spin up new instances for virtual appliances. Okay, so Question? yeah. yeah. Uh, it's possible to configure to use cookie by cookie name or HTTP header. Yeah, HA proxy supports it out of out of box. Okay, so thank you. Thank you.